Hey guys, welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids. I'm here with nine time Team Canada member, world champion, and the face of Canadian bowling, Mark Bufa. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, not only an outstanding bowler, Mark is also the CEO of Bufa Distributions. And because of that, I'm sure you get a lot of early access, a lot of information that the average bowler doesn't get. So Mark, tell us, how early do you know about bowling balls before they release? Right, so this is something that everyone asks us all the time, like what do you know? And because of the internet, obviously, in today's day and age, the word travels fast. Mm -hmm. So the manufacturers are very, very strict with how they do it. And it's actually funny because there are times where we'll see it on Facebook before we actually know about it. Really? So, so, so the average bowler will get it before the distributor? They, they, they try to send them all at the same time, mm -hmm. right? So being here in North America, we have to follow that schedule mm -hmm. or we follow the schedule of all the releases. So if anything, maybe some of the, the early access would be more of the Asian releases or the Asian distributors, excuse me, or European distributors because of the transit time to get across the oceans they might know a little bit earlier than us but for us since you know it's basically just you know a land border crossing to get across we know it pretty much at the same time that the consumer will know okay give or take a couple of days but i don't like if you're asking me what's coming out of bowl expo i have no clue Interesting. i can guess but i i don't know so you mentioned overseas distributors and you got a little bit of information with them why don't we get the same balls that they do? Well, as I mentioned, it does take time for that boat to float across the ocean. So uh, I don't know that answer, to, to be honest with you, but I could just kind of think on the logistics side. Like, so for us from Canada to get, to get a truck, like we're based in Montreal, Canada, which is on the East Coast. And let's use Storm as an example, since they're on you know, Mountain Time in Utah. Mm -hmm. It does take a lot longer for the truck to make it from west to east. The transit time will be a little bit longer. So I can only imagine when you're trying to ship a container uh, going from here to, let's say, Japan, how long it would take to get that. So those Asian releases are what we call private label balls. Okay, okay. so what they might say is, let's say the Global 900 Reality was a popular ball there. They might say, hey, let's order I don't know, let's say 500 of a reality core with a new cover and we'll turn it into a new release and let's throw it in that container with new Roto-Grip gem, let's say. So it makes a full shipment, creates like a secondary release. It just makes sense to do it that way. And that's why you see that. And basically Storm is not selling that to domestic distributors because that distributor said, hey, I want this cover and core combo mm -hmm. and we do it. We did that uh, back in 2018 with the Bufa IQ. So we ordered a set set of balls with a cover and core combo and a scent of maple syrup. And uh, you know, they went pretty well. So that's, I think that kind of fits into that same spectrum. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that, but it just makes logistical sense. And I think that's how it's done. Also, just so you know, and you probably guys don't know this, and even for you at home, here in North America, the distributors will sell everything under the sun. Whereas in Europe and in Asia, if you are a Storm distributor or a Brunswick distributor, you only distribute those blanket products. Interesting. You can, so like JR Pro Shop orders from Bufa Distribution, we have the Brunswick and the Dexter and the Storm and you know the parts for the pin setters and all that under one roof mm -hmm. it might not be the same overseas where they are ordering from one distributor for one product line and another for another and maybe another for their parts and oils and all that type of stuff so it is a little bit more of a spread out model overseas than it is here in north america sweet so that covers a lot of the bowling balls but what about accessories like shoes do you know what's coming out early yeah, so the shoes is one of those things because of production times and, and getting things across. And shoes will last a little bit longer, like the shelf life is a little bit nicer mm -hmm. uh, for distribution than, than balls where it's just such a quick, to, a quick turnaround on those. We know that way in advance, okay, because they ask us to place our orders really early. Um, so like with Dexter, one of the bigger shoe manufacturers, we have to place our purchase order before the holidays in order to get it in, you know, July, August. You know, so we know what's in the line and uh, I can't share it with you, but I could share it with you behind the scenes. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those things that, yeah, we, we know that quite early in advance. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see too. I'm sure. You know, and, and, you know, with the staff that we have at our place, 
because we don't know what's going to be popular and you're kind of like having to look into a crystal ball to make your purchase order yeah. that's where we bring in people and we say well what do you think about this mm -hmm. you know and there's there's one model that's coming out that's pretty interesting and i'm not going to say what it is but <laughs> when you see it for the first time you're going to be like oh okay that's what i know mark was talking about really? and that's where we have some mixed emotions we're like okay is this going to be a hit or a miss yeah and that's kind of where you got to guess i think so. it's going to look like a sock not knowing anything but no laces just pure sock Let's kind of go towards the Yeezy trend and stuff <laughs> yeah, like that. Exactly. Okay, the let's, let's just, there you go. Yeah. So you talked about kind of having that crystal ball and kind of predicting the future. Can you kind of at this point in your career know if a ball is going to be popular, if it's going to fly off the shelves? Right. It, and that's that's the hardest question to ask. And it's the hardest part of our job as distributors is what the stock and, and also not just that, but also the weight ratio. Mm -hmm. Right. So will this ball be hotter in a 14, 15, 16? Like what's it going to be? And, and it is the hard part. However, with certain core combinations that do have a popularity, it, it makes it a little bit easier, right? But sometimes with some new cover core combinations, it is a little bit of a guess. And also a lot of elite amateur bowlers will use the Pro Tour as their measuring stick when it comes to that, hey, what's good? Mm -hmm. And that becomes a little bit of a, um, of, of a guess, right? So we'll use the popularity of the 900 Global Zen as an example. Mm -hmm. It first came out, it was a bit of a sleeper. And then all of a sudden you start seeing it on telecast after telecast after telecast and it becomes a staple in a lot of the bowlers bags. Same thing with the original Purple Hammer in 2016. It was it was dead until all of a sudden like people started saying, hey, this thing's really popular and now you can't keep them in sock. Yeah. And, you know, so it's just one of those things like it's either hot at release or it's also maybe hot, maybe like phase two or second run in the release. Mm -hmm. And those are hard to keep up with as a, as a distributor because you never know, right? So yeah, that is that is the hardest part of our job as distributors, for sure. So I'm sure as a distributor, it can be really difficult because there's so many bowling balls, so many different brands, so many different accessories. Why don't kind of every pro shop hold one of everything or hold every single ball that's out there? Right, and this is, uh, you know, with the business model today with all these new releases and, you know, pro shop members being on staff and this and that, it's extremely hard for the pro shop to absolutely hold everything in stock, mm -hmm. okay? And this is where the distributor now becomes a good partner, okay? So if your pro shop is buying from distributor X and a client walks in and he's asking for a, a certain type of a grip, let's say, let's say your pro shop, you know, like here at JR Pro Shop, they like to have a lot of the turbo products in stock, mm -hmm. but a bowler might like the vice grip as, as, as an option. Well, they need to turn around and get it quick ship to bring it in. So as a consumer, you know, try to keep that with a grain of salt. And if you do like a certain product line or accessory line, maybe stock it up yourself a little bit because you do like it, mm -hmm. okay? And, and try to work with your pro shop on that, okay? There are certain product lines that like shoes, example, right? There's so many models, you know, you've got Dexter, KR, 3G, Brunswick, you've got all these different shoe lines, mm -hmm. and it's extremely hard for the pro shop to hold every size and, and style in stock, okay? And you know, just like me, like I'm a size 13, it's extremely hard to, to find those in a store. I could go to Brown's here at the shopping mall next door, and they won't have every model in my size, and it is a little bit frustrating. And this is where there now has been a gap between the e-tailers, the dot-coms, and also the, the brick and mortar yeah. is because there's a lot of dropship opportunities in that. And, you know, hence our coupon code, yeah. right? So if you want to order something online, we now have a partnership through our friends at JR Pro Shop and Bufa Distribution to enable you to still make a cut on the sale and still make that sale for something that you might not hold in stock because guaranteed you don't have an SST6 wide size nine left-handed in stock. I, I have to check, but I don't right. think so. But as for us as a distributor, we might have it in inventory. So it is a way uh, to, to, to kind of offer that uh, to your consumers, right? So for those of you who don't know, Bufa Distributions is actually a partner with Cubica AMF. And there's been a strong marketing push towards string pins and string bowling. What's your take on that? I will say just for statistical purposes, in the last two years, we have installed over a hundred lane beds wow. of, uh, well, a hundred pin setters of string, the edge string pin spotter. It has been very well received in the industry. Okay. So let's look at it on two aspects here. Okay. We have the proprietors 
hat and we also have the bowler's hat to, mm -hmm. to look at here okay and what i'm saying that is like kind of take it take that with a grain of salt there so okay so if you are looking at a small rural town where there is a small population where the next bowling center is going to be a four hour drive from them I'll ask you that question. Does yeah. string make a difference? No, it does no, not. No, it does not. Because if you want a ball, you just want to be able to throw a ball down a lane and knock down pins. Mm -hmm. Okay. So being here in, um, in Canada, obviously, if you're in the middle of Saskatchewan, probably the next bowling center next to Estevan Bowl is going to be, you know, quite a ways. Right, guys? You know? So in that case, maybe the string versus free fall becomes less of a factor, yeah. okay? But here in Richmond, BC, whereas the next bowling center is probably a 10 minute drive, it might be a little bit of a, of a concern to, to your league bowlers. However, having said that, the cost of operations is peanuts compared to free fall machines, wow. okay? The cost of safety, security, product training, you know, getting new staff in, uh, in the COVID era where, where, you know, staff turnover might be an issue, mm -hmm. training them on a string machine is a three hour process, wow. right? And also the technology today, especially on this, the edge string pin spotter, uh, there's an app now where if something goes wrong, the manager and the pin setter mechanic get a notification with a video on how to fix it. Really? So it is a very modern product and it is a great product for that. So I know Reed's here in the background and he's kind of like, <laughs> That sounds pretty good. You can see, you can see the, the mind going. So as I'm saying, that is a, a strong plus side to that. Now, obviously, we have the, pins, the pin setter, pin fall difference there. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is a difference. Okay? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There is a difference between the pin fall of string and free fall. As a purist myself, I've bowled the game at a very high level. I notice that there's a difference. If you come to our place, uh, we have one lane in our pro shop. It is a string machine. For giving lessons and for doing that type of stuff and for a retail setting like we have, mm -hmm. it is a no-brainer. We spend maybe three hours a year maintaining the pin set. Wow. Okay? We maybe rotate the pins two times a year just because we don't want them to look nice and because it's me and I want my place to look nice. But in essence, it is a set it and forget it type scenario, which is great. However, bowling a national championship on string, you'd have to do some convincing to me to, to make that legit. Now, obviously here in Canada, it is sanctioned, okay? So for the CTF to do that, theoretically, that's fine. But the thing is, is the way that you have to look at this is that I'm bowling on string in the event and so are you. So theoretically, it's a equal playing field, yeah. right? So the best way I like to look at this is if you're bowling in a wood house across the street and you're bowling in a synthetic house right here, there's going to be some key characteristic differences, right? Your ball selection won't be the same. The pinfall won't be the same. The carry won't be the same. Here we have twister pins across the road. They might have brand new, you know, cubic AMF and flight pins. The pinfall is going to be a little bit different, okay? So like anything, I think now the string versus free fall becomes another factor in the variable equation really okay so i just think that's it right so i'm using lane surface as an example and there's so many other different characteristics i just think that the string versus pinfall now becomes just another thing to talk about i believe that the pinfall is a little bit higher on a string machine than it is on a free fall machine with all these new fancy dancy forty thousand dollar lane machines increasing your score we now have these high performance balls that increase your score we now have a pin setter that's going to increase your score a little bit too you know wow. for the general public i think it's going to be you know, well received because the scoring is going to be a little bit higher. However, it's not as high as you think it might be. Yeah. So okay. what do you think in terms of pins wise per game? So I, the way I like to quantify it is I think you're going to get an extra hit a game. Wow. So, you know, on the high end, 11 pins, uh, if you're averaging 150, you're still going to average around 150. It's not going to take you from a 150 to a 180, mm -hmm. but I do think on the high end, it might inflate your score between, I would say four to eight pins on average. Wow. You know, if, if, if you're at that high level and you're able to hit the pocket quite a bit, fine. If you're like, let's say, a sub 200 average bowler, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference in your game uh, because I don't think you're going to be seeing those types of hits as much as some of the higher, higher end players. So strings are becoming more popular. Like you said, more houses are implementing it and they're loving it. Do you think that this is something that could realistically make it to the pro tour? I think so. 
Wow. Okay, uh, maybe not the US Open events, but as you all know, more and more the PBA has been bringing on these specialty events, right? So like the PBA clash or the ones where they would mix the men and the women into like a different bracket and also the PBA playoffs. Mm -hmm. I think like those smaller spin-off events where it's like an invitation only, that is a nice way to kind of lead into using strength. Now, US Open, Masters, uh, World Championships, that type of stuff, no. But maybe those, like I said, invite only events, I think that is a nice way to kind of lean into strength. This year, maybe not, maybe within a five, three to five year window. I think, I, I think so. So as a big player in the bowling industry and as a distributor, do you really think that string bowling has a place? I think it does. Uh, like I said earlier, the question I asked you, if you are you know, within a, a certain amount of you know miles drive from the next bowling center if that is the differentiation between the bowling center closing its doors and staying open because of the cost effectiveness of the machines mm -hmm. then definitely bowling is better than no bowling yeah so there is its there is its place is it it's it does it have its place everywhere in the industry no it does it have its niche case scenario where it does fit the answer is yes and I know that I understand that some purists don't like it and we might get some bashing down in the comments mm -hmm. that they hate it or whatnot, but it is, it is the reality today and I strongly believe that, you know, I think we all need to embrace it. Building off of that entertainment aspect, as a distributor, what percentage would you say the breakdown is between focusing on the entertainment, the fun, casual side, and then the sporting, competitive side? Right, and that's pretty neat too because yesterday when I landed here, the first guy to walk in through the pro shop brought in the clear rose bowling ball, which has been discontinued for a long time, and he probably bought it on eBay or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he came here to drill the ball. And uh, so this guy doesn't bowl in any leagues or anything, right? So there's the novelty aspect of it where they might not want to bowl like a 30-week league, which is pretty big, right? Like we all grew up getting used to bowling a longer stint, but that's because it's in, it's in our DNA. But for somebody that's just coming every now and then, they don't want to bowl a longer stint. So this is where I hope that certain uh, bowling centers are bringing in shorter format leagues, maybe like 10-week leagues and things like that. And also the other thing too is if you're doing proper marketing to get people through your door, and then they, they like the sport where they're gonna buy their own pair of shoes, their ball, their bag, hopefully from the local pro shop. But if not, there needs to be also internal marketing to be able to convert those people to either a short stint league or a longer, you know, 30 plus week uh, schedule, mm -hmm. right? So there needs to be outside marketing and inside marketing. And same thing too with the kids' parties, right? So the kids will bring all their friends in for a party. Do they leave with a leaflet of the youth program? They do or they don't. The way to look at it is that there is the leisure aspect, but the challenge for the bowling centers and for the pro shops is how do I convert that guy from coming once a year to maybe coming 10 times a year? Mm -hmm. And that is the challenge. And then going off of that, we've seen the rise of e-commerce and being able to buy bowling balls from like Amazon or bowling shoes from Amazon. Why is it so important to still support your local pro shops and to buy from them? Right, definitely. Obviously, any, any brick and mortar business, like when I go into a different city like we have been today, we try to support local restaurants and do all that type of stuff because, you know, it's, uh, we're also a small business in our area too, so we appreciate the support. However, having said that, a lot of these uh, online sites uh, that, that, like you had mentioned, uh, a lot of them offer some third-party uh, selling options and I do know that uh, the guys here at JR Pro Shop do sell on uh, places like marketplace and also on Facebook groups and all these types of stuff that's one thing I would challenge some of the pro shops is to not only sell inside your four walls but also list your products on these on these uh, selling uh, websites these uh, marketplace type websites because you're basically opening yourself up to a larger clientele yeah. Right. And I know that the JR Pro Shop guys are going to order some of like those older balls that might have some shelf appeal, you know, to, to maybe some guys looking for like maybe a magenta idol. And if they have one in stock, they can maybe sell it for an extra 20, 30 bucks because it is now a novelty item. Yeah. But they're maybe not selling it to a bowler here, but they're selling it somewhere else. So it's not to say that you as a brick and mortar pro shop, you can't sell online. Mm -hmm. Okay, so selling online now becomes uh, something great for that by using those third party options, definitely. As a pro shop, if you're watching this, embrace that. And as a bowler, please support your local pro shop and they will support the local distributor as well. Jung's hoarding all the magenta idols, by the way. There's yeah. like 60 in his trunk. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs>
they're priceless too. So we've got tons of great insights. Thank you, Mark. So we want to hear from you guys. Let us know in the comments down below, what's a bowling secret or bowling insight that you would want to know more about? So let us know. Maybe we'll get Mark to answer some. Maybe we'll answer some. Maybe we'll find someone who does have the answers. So thank you for watching. Thank you to Mark. And please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to join our JR Pro Shop community filled with perks, early access to videos, and coaching, make sure to hit the join button down below. Don't forget to also check out bufabowling.com. Check us out on also all of our social media platforms. We do also have a YouTube channel. Uh, check it out down below, links in the description. And also coupon code shop.bufabowling.com. Use Jungle Barks for 10% off your next order. And thank you everyone for using that coupon code because you use it quite a bit. And thank you for the support. And proceeds do also go to JR Pro Shop. So, uh, you know, please go right ahead. And again, thanks to everyone here for you know, having me and doing this. You guys grew this channel and it's really awesome to see. And, you know, everyone, please continue subscribing and this whole member thing and everything is just, it's insane to watch. And also buy their merch, right? Merch, shop.jarproshop.com. Yeah, great. T-shirts, hoodies, everything, we got it. Yeah, and if you want some Bufa distribution <laughs> merch too, head over to bufabowling.com. We got apparel too, so definitely check that out. You can get my caricature on your chest. <laughs> or our caricature. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go, yes. <laughs> All the links will be down in the description. Please check them out. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you next time.